It is the latest in an expanding range of SUVs from Mercedes-Benz. The new GLB aims to create a niche within the compact premium SUV space, which will see it straddle two segments, bigger than the GLA and a tad smaller than the GLC. The car was unveiled alongside the global test drive of the big sister GLS in Utah, USA. The setting was quite apt for the GLB2 since it's not only another SUV but it's also going to be made in Mercedes-Benz's Alabama plant in the US. SUVs account for the maximum selling Mercedes-Benz models worldwide now and uh, these are the latest figures that have just been shared with us. You got the flagship SUVs back there that's the G the GLS the new GLE which we're still waiting for in India. We've got the GLC, which has recently been given its mid-cycle facelift. And of course, the GLA, which was the tiny baby of the family. And it's between the GLA and C, if you know your alphabets, of course, that you know the GLB fits in. Now, in terms of size, in terms of attribute, also, it kind of has that nice compact footprint. Two big differences that really stand out. Of course, you get the new styling, the new design language, but it's kind of squarish and boxy, unlike the other cars, which are more coupe-like. And uh, the second thing, well, it is compact, but it's still a seven-seater, and uh, that kind of fits a hole in the market, a very lucrative one, according to Mercedes-Benz, because guess what the second highest selling segment for the company is worldwide? Compact cars, and so this one is an SUV and a compact car, and which is why the company thinks it has big hopes from it. So let's get this right. The GLB is 4,634 millimeters long with a 2,829 millimeter wheelbase. It has a generous 1658 millimeter height while width comes in at 1834 millimeters. Now compare that to both the GLA on the one hand and the GLC on the other and you can see where it fits and how it is actually taller than both those cars. And it's still also a potential rival then for something like the X3. The car is not in line with the baby G-Wagon feel that the 2012 Energy Force concept had exuded. At the time, there was a lot of speculation that this will be the GLB. Well, the face on the production car is a safer GL family derivative, though of course it has its own signature DRLs. But yes, the squarer profile and higher roof are more G-like. On the inside though, the car is its own model and very much more in line with its platform siblings, the A-Class sedan and the new B-Class. Aircraft inspired AC vents, very funky looking, use of very interesting materials, lots of metal, dark surfaces, there's carbon fiber here, and uh, you can of course customize that, we're told. But it's just the layout, the design. In terms of tech, it's everything new that you expect from Mercedes. You've got the MBUX, the, the big screens, but in terms of layout, in terms of design, like I was saying, is where the newness comes in. You've got a good sense of space up here as well. There's a sunroof and everything looks very quirky, very innovative and modern. And uh, it's likely to appeal therefore to a new kind of buyer, dare I say, a younger buyer. Younger or older, buyers will like its ease of entry. The second row is not as roomy as it could have been because designers have had to leave room for either the third row in that seven seat configuration or a generous boot, something many crossovers cannot boast. Certainly very different in its overall layout and design appeal on the inside, but it's the sense of space that is pretty impressive. Even though this is a small car, in terms of legroom, in terms of headroom, you do get a good sense. And this knowing the fact that there could be a third row as well. That optional third row is tight. It's good on seat back angle and even under thigh support. But the floor is higher and tall adults will not want to be here for long distances. Build quality though appears to be good and the boot in the five-seat configuration is really great. Yeah. 
Engine options on the GLB are two petrols and two diesels. Well, three diesels. The first petrol is a 1.3 litre four cylinder unit that can shut down one cylinder for efficiency when not needed. The four wheel drive petrol is the GLB 250 formatic. This two litre unit gets the eight speed DCT transmission and a 220 bhp output. The diesel side sees the 200D available in two different variants, the two and four wheel drive formats. The output on both models is the same at 147 bhp and both get the 8G DCT gearbox. And the powerful diesel is the 220D 4MATIC. It uses the same engine as the 200D but tuned to offer 186 bhp and 80 Nm more of peak torque. The Mercedes-Benz GLB will begin to roll into global markets in the second half of this year and will be followed by the second generation GLA class in 2020. Now keep in mind that the next GLA is likely to retain its sporty, compact and lower profile to keep a separation between it and the more practical and spacious GLB. How the GLB differs from the GLC is already apparent to you. So will India get the GLB? I'm calling it a Jalebi and so just for that reason alone, I think it should come to us. But jokes apart, my firm belief is that we should get the GLA, GLB and GLC as between them, Mercedes-Benz could really corner a sizable chunk of the premium SUV space, especially at the compact end. The current GLA has been pretty popular here in India, don't forget. Mercedes-Benz India and its global headquarter will now initiate an internal discussion on whether India should get the GLA or GLB or indeed both cars. Your feedback will help shape some of that conversation. So do tell us what you think should happen.